Your family home is being demolished right now. My husband Derek suddenly told me over the phone, leaving me speechless. The picture he sent me showed my childhood home being brutally torn apart. I am Kim, and I live with my husband Derek and his mother Mary. I met Derek at work, but I quit my job after we got married, and now I'm a busy housewife. I later found out that before our marriage, Derek seemed like a kind and reliable person, but he was actually a mama's boy. Once we started living with Mary, his true colors began to show. His devotion to his mother was nauseating as he always prioritized her over me, his wife. Everything in our home, from the interior design to the furniture and daily meals, was decided according to her wishes. Just by drinking coffee, she quickly became the queen of our household, and I was left to do all the housework like her servant. Derek didn't care at all about how miserable or exhausted I felt. I'm starting to wonder if I married him just to take care of her. Her arrogance escalated day by day. She never openly mistreated me in front of her son, but when we were alone, she constantly tormented me. I could bear some of her insults and silent treatment, but one day when she called my freshly brewed coffee disgusting and splashed it in my face, nearly burning me, I reached my breaking point. I tearfully confided in Derek when he came home, but he brushed it off saying, Mom was just in a bad mood. It's not a big deal. The next day, she was even worse, apparently having heard about my conversation with Derek. How dare you tell my son about our little argument? She sneered. I wonder what kind of upbringing your parents gave you, getting so upset over a little criticism of your coffee. She conveniently forgot that she had splashed the coffee in my face. With a nasty grin, she mocked not only me, but also my parents. I could no longer bear her insults towards my parents who had raised me so lovingly. I couldn't possibly stand living under the same roof as her any longer. I proposed to my husband that we live separately from Mary. You want me to kick out my mom? I can't do such a disrespectful thing now. Then I'll move out. I replied without hesitation. I knew he wouldn't easily agree to living apart from her. I didn't want to live in her castle, surrounded by her tasteless hobbies any longer. I quickly filled out the divorce papers and arranged a contract for a weekly apartment. It took some time to finalize the contract, but there were plenty of ways to kill time. The next morning, I left the divorce papers on the table and hurriedly left the house. I desperately wanted to avoid going back to my parents' home. If he came looking for me, he would probably check there first. I didn't want to cause any unnecessary worry or trouble for my parents. I hurried the move so he wouldn't have a chance to interfere any further. Afterward, I arranged a trip for my parents as a gift. I broke into my savings from before I got married to finance the gift. My humble parents hesitated, but I insisted and sent them on a trip to San Francisco. I wanted them to enjoy themselves since I hadn't been able to properly show my gratitude towards them after being married, always dealing with Mary and Derek. With my parents away, they wouldn't hear from Derek for a while, so I wouldn't have to worry about him causing them trouble. I was starting to get used to my new life in the weekly apartment when Derek suddenly called. He had called several times since I left, but I had ignored them all. I reluctantly answered the phone, wondering why he was calling now. Derek sounded surprisingly cheerful on the other end of the phone, asking, How are you? I cautiously replied, What do you want? Unapologetically, he continued, I'm having your family home demolished right now. 
I fell silent for a moment, not understanding what he was saying. Demolished? Did you say demolished? Like destroying? What on earth are you talking about? Don't mess with me. I retorted, still not grasping the meaning of his words. He remained nonchalant. Yeah, I'm selling the land your family home is on to buy my mom a luxurious house. I was left speechless by his nonsensical statements. With a smug tone, he said, We're married, so it's shared property, right? And hung up the phone. Only the cold, electronic, disconnected tone remained. What kind of ridiculous logic is that? It's like something an alien would say. I couldn't tell if it was a prank or if he was serious, so all I could do was stare at my silent phone. Then a notification popped up immediately. A picture had been sent. It was from Derek. When I opened it, there was a picture of a house being torn down. The white walls and blue roof were just like my family home. I could feel the blood drain from my face. I tried calling him back furiously, but he completely ignored me. I couldn't help but collapse onto the floor. Later, I found out that after I had left, he went to my parents' house, as expected. He learned from a neighbor that my parents were on vacation. The neighbor also mentioned that I hadn't returned to my family home. Upon hearing this, he became outraged. So she tells my mom to live alone while her parents go on a luxurious trip? Though it was an absurd grudge, it must have seemed unfair to him. In a fit of anger, he decided to demolish the house as revenge. Unfortunately for him, neither my parents nor I were there. Moreover, he hadn't submitted the divorce papers yet. He thought that since we were still married, he could do whatever he wanted with my property. Hello? Sis, are you okay? I hurriedly called my sister who was still living at the family home. I didn't know how he managed to do it, but if he forcefully demolished the house with her inside, what would happen to her? I anxiously waited for her to answer. After several tones, my sister answered the phone in a relaxed tone. Hello? What's wrong? I just woke up. The house! Is it okay? Even though I asked with a sense of urgency, my sister's attitude didn't change. It almost made me feel like I was overreacting. What? The house? Oh, Keith across the street seems to be having some renovation work done or something, but our house is fine. I couldn't believe it, but that had to be it. I fell silent for a moment. The house across the street from my family home where Keith, who has been kind to us since we were little, lived, looked identical to ours. Moreover, our last names were the same, though we were not related. Because of this, we often had mix-ups with Christmas cars and visitors. In other words, the house Derek claimed to have demolished was... Oh no! It seems like Derek mistakenly demolished Keith's house instead! What? Even talking about it gave me a headache. Having our house destroyed would be bad enough, but accidentally demolishing the neighbor's house is no joke! I explained the situation to my sister and rushed to my family home. Together, we headed to Keith's house. It seemed that Derek and the contractors had already left, and the house was completely demolished. What do we do about this? My sister and I turned pale as a man with an exotic appearance dragging a suitcase approached us while letting out a bizarre scream. My house is gone! Keith, who had just returned from an overseas trip, exclaimed with wide eyes. My sister and I exchanged glances and then apologized. We explained the situation in detail, 
but it all sounded like excuses, and we couldn't help but feel sorry for involving him in all this. I am so sorry that your precious house ended up like this. My sister and I continued to apologize. We knew that apologizing wasn't enough, but it was all we could do for now. He seemed shocked by the sudden turn of events, but when we apologized, he lifted his face and spoke kindly. It's not your fault. There's someone else who needs to take responsibility. His tone was gentle, but his eyes weren't smiling. He suggested a plan to make things right. A few days later, Derek appeared in front of the demolished house with the contractors. I had called him there. It was a gamble whether he would come or not, but perhaps he was intimidated by the formal protest or simply wanted to see my crying face. Either way, he agreed to come. I went to meet him with my sister, Keith, and a lawyer. Derek seemed surprised to see me with allies, but he quickly put on a brave face. What do you want now? Nothing can be done about the demolished house. Besides, it's our shared property as a married couple. You have no right to complain. He still didn't know the truth. I responded to him with a hint of pity. The house you destroyed wasn't my family home. It was Keith's house. As I introduced him, Keith glared at Derek and stepped forward. The usually gentle man was truly terrifying when angry. Even Derek, meeting him for the first time, shrank back from Keith's intensity. Then he argued back. No, but your maiden name is Jackson, right? I checked properly before demolishing it. Hearing that he had demolished someone else's house, Derek started to panic. I sighed as if to interrupt him. It's not that unusual of a last name. We just happen to live in a similar house and have the same last name. But what are the odds? He was genuinely upset, but it sounded like a comic retort. My sister chuckled beside me. This is hilarious! So hilarious! Ignoring her, I continued. Besides, do you even understand what shared property means? My family home's land isn't part of our shared property. Maybe you should ask this lawyer here for some advice. At my signal, the lawyer handed Derek a business card. Derek seemed surprised, apparently not realizing he was a lawyer, and stared at the card. My sister leaned in to look at Derek's face and spoke to him mockingly. Don't you know Keith Jackson of our city? He's a famous landowner around here. Indeed, Keith was not just an ordinary man. As my sister later explained, he used to be an executive at the company where Derek worked which was also the company where I met him. Sometimes his eyes would not smile, and his expressions had an aura that spoke of his influence. It's not my fault. Derek finally seemed to realize the gravity of the situation. He insisted repeatedly that it wasn't his fault, his previous boldness gone, replaced by a panicked demeanor. Unfortunately, the contractors, who should have been his only allies, fled as soon as they heard Keith's story. They were the kind of contractors who would demolish a house without proper investigation. Derek must have been caught by a fraudulent contractor. Enough already! Keith, who seemed to have run out of patience, yelled at Derek. The air seemed to tremble with the force of his anger. Admit your wrongdoing without any excuses. Or do you want to involve the police? At these words, Derek became completely subdued. In the end, with the lawyer present, he agreed to our side's demands, and the situation was settled. 
Derek signed the divorce papers and was forced to write a letter stating that he would pay compensation to both Keith and me. The compensation amount was quite significant because of the house demolition and he had already incurred debt for the demolition costs. The unscrupulous contractor had already taken the money and disappeared without a trace, leaving Derek with no one to rely on and struggling to repay the debt. The fallout also affected Mary. She had thought she would live with Derek in a luxurious house, but when her son demolished the house of wealthy landowner Keith Jackson, she instantly became a target of ridicule. Naturally, she could not accept such a situation, and soon she could not leave her house. As for Keith, although his house was demolished, he hadn't suffered too much damage. The reason he had gone on an overseas trip was his daughter who lived abroad. He had received an international call from his son-in-law saying that his daughter was about to give birth. Having lost his wife 20 years ago, Keith doted on his grandchild and decided to live abroad with his daughter as she had previously consulted with him. So he intended to demolish the house and sell the land after selling his business. Of course he was shocked because the house had disappeared sooner than expected. But he laughed, saying that the result was the same. I didn't inform my parents of anything until they returned from their San Francisco trip because I didn't want to ruin their vacation. When they returned home and heard the whole story, they turned pale and were speechless. But they were relieved that nothing had happened to me. At my parents' suggestion, Keith would stay at our house until his business was settled. I also moved back to my parents' house from the weekly apartment, and we spent our time reminiscing about our memories with them, who would soon be unable to return to the U.S. for a while. About a month later, the day of Keith's departure finally arrived, and our family went to the airport to see him off. He was carrying a bunch of toys, and he seemed so excited to see his grandchild that he looked like he might start dancing. Although it was a time for goodbyes, his happiness was so infectious that we couldn't help but smile. We waved our hands as we watched him head towards the boarding gate. A few months later, we received several airmail letters from Keith, each containing photos. In every photo, he was holding his granddaughter looking incredibly happy. My sister said, They've been nagging us. They want to see their grandchild's face. It's definitely Keith's influence. I agreed. My sister and I had begun to hear our parents expressing their desire for a grandchild as well. Seeing Keith's happy face and the adorable photos of his granddaughter made me want to have a family of my own. But next time I get married, I vow to choose someone who isn't a mama's boy and who will genuinely cherish my family.